Hey everyone, Nick here. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick little trigger warning for this episode. There is one part that deals with rape and sexual violence and such. If that is something that you do not want to hear about, uh, I say when it happens in the episode and you can skip over it. Um, other than that, uh, I hope that you enjoy the episode and thank you very much for listening and supporting us. Hey, 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 welcome to your weekly corner spatey. It's myself, Nick, doing the hey, hey, hey again for once because I haven't done it for like weeks now. And I'm joined with Kieran. Hey, hey, hey. And Yulia is back. I mean, I hey, hey, hey. Really, like, hey, come gone. on. You interrupted my hey, hey, hey. Oh, you can do the hey, hey, hey again. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, do hey, it, hey. It. Yes. <laughs> All right. Nice. I felt I felt that. Like I, I felt Now you know why heart. I do it. Yeah, it's Rob like, makes yeah. fun of you like hey. I wanna, hey. I want to do that. Like, hey, 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 welcome to your weekly corner Speti. It's myself, you, Julia, joined by Nick. Hi. Come on. <laughs> and Kiran. Hey. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean like, yeah. You can you can do that. You can do that from from from, from now on then. All right, uh, you guys, you guys, you guys feeling good? You guys feeling loose? You guys feeling feeling happy? I'm feeling pretty good since there's been like a coup on the podcast, and now Yudi is in charge. This rules. <laughs> yeah, cool. I, yeah I, per, all right, perfect so, transition. This is this is a matriarchy now, but <laughs> yeah, all right. So I, we're talking one, about I'm an ally. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about you know yeah yeah power transitions, forceful power transitions. Money, drugs, power, me. <laughs> the <laughs> game, if you will. Uh, maybe not the game, the rapper, but the game as in like, you know, the, 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 the money and, and the, the racketeering game. Game of life. Game of life. <laughs> that, yeah, our favorite game at Corners, baby. <laughs> you should play that. It's always fun. I hate that game so goddamn much. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing Cyberpunk 2020 anymore. We're just playing the game. <laughs> yeah, please, let's do that. I need to know. <laughs> yeah. So, our, uh, uh, yeah, so, so we're all feeling good. We're feeling happy. We're feeling, you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed. I'm going to ruin that all for you today. Uh, yeah. I have I have a terrible topic to talk about today that um, I know this is like a big deal in Germany. I've seen a bit of like coverage here and there, maybe a little bit. But this story is particularly important in Germany because I think it's just that there's a, cause there's a massive Turkish population in Germany as well. And we are talking about the bizarre mafia boss whistleblower who just like made a YouTube video calling out that the mafia and the Turkish state work hand in hand together alongside with the MIT, the Turkish secret service. Now, yeah. uh, his name is, is, uh, Sedat Pe Peker. You have to help me with the names, Yulia, because you kind of can understand yeah. how Turkish is written. Yeah. Um, and he is, uh, uh, um, he's not good. Uh, uh, even though he is the one who is, you know, whistleblowing, he is doing it simply out of his own interest, obviously. And, um, this is kind of at least all if you are in the realm of like what we are of like kind of paying attention to European politics. It's pretty well known that the Turkish government and the mafia in, in Turkey have had a a very good relationship for a very long time. Yeah. For 30 years. And the reasoning for doing Doesn't so... It well, didn't it start with because they needed hitmen or something like that? Or yeah. they needed like people to take it of their dirty business, especially exactly. when it came to like Kurdish people? Or, mm -hmm. or Gonna get to oh, that. Oh, fun. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. So, I mean, Yulia's exactly right, is that this relationship starts in the 90s, like, officially, where mm. the, um, uh, the Turkish government starts employing low-key... Um, members of the mafia to do their dirty work for them and there is a scandal in 1996 called the i mean it's way down in the notes but we might as well talk about it now kind of these origins called mm -hmm. the um the uh Suskuluk scandal i cannot pronounce that uh okay. where there was uh the what the police chief of istanbul got in a car crash in the town of Suskuluk. <laughs> And uh, him and his wife died and two other people who were also members of an extreme right wing party um, uh, were, were uh, uh, um, 
driving a car around uh, that was totaled that was just carrying drugs, guns, money, fake passports, all on behalf of the former interior minister, Mehmed Ayad. Mm. All right. Mm. And so this was then money that then uh, money, weapons, drugs, guns, everything that then were done literally like signatures were like everywhere on shit, like very much connect. Like you could easily uh, uh, put it back to him. And he stepped down immediately and then uh, served a prison sentence until 2013. So this is the like initial moment where it became like a, like more or less official, I think, like internationally that Turkey has this relationship with the mafia that is um, uh, that is kind of like professionalized as yeah the government can't do these hits the go- like this is also during a time where the PKK was having actions in uh, eastern Turkey and they needed hits done on on you know political targets so on so on so forth so this um. There's also been cases of them murdering uh, Kurdish uh, politicians and activists mm-hmm. in the 90s as well. But um, the thing that makes it so interesting with uh, what uh, uh, Sedat Peker comes out and says is that he just lays out in a YouTube video literally everything. Everything that he Ooh. can talk about that like benefits him to, like, to some regard. So... No, I was about to say, is this like a Navalny video? <laughs> you know, like kind of, yeah, <laughs> like, like kind of. Okay, except for very Navalny, much for not... his own political, for his own political yeah, yeah, gains. Interest, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And at the end of it, he reacts to his um, his DNA results and finds out that he's like one hundred percent Greek. Greek. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, he no. just fucking flips. That that's why that's why he did it. He's like, I can't, I can't fucking do it anymore. I. <laughs> I'm I have to, like, <laughs> I can't. I believe exclusively in the Hellenic Republic. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> All in Turkish. Yeah, he's like, with a good conscience, I can no longer, you know, treat the Greek people like this. Still don't like anyone else because, yeah. like, whatever. But, so here's a little backstory on our man. Uh, I'm just going to call him Sadat from, right, for, from, from, from now on. I don't want Because to, you know he, each he, other, like, first we name know our, We know each other. We're pretty, yeah. I've been chilling with him in Dubai, you know, like, what is it? Jets, uh, Jet ski, what's that song? Jet skiing in Dubai or whatever. <laughs> that like Drake or Future song or some shit, yeah. whatever. Um, so he um, he has not always been in the best favor of the government. He was uh, charged in 2017 with racketeering for 14 years and only served out, um, only served seven of them, got out in 2014. A lot of it is speculated because he is, uh, you know, very closely tied with the government. Hmm. And uh, since he's been out in 2014, he has been a very, very, very proud Erdogan supporter, and he is, I believe, an AKP member, but if not, he does a lot of campaigning for the AKP. So just like on social media, he's just like being like, get out and vote for the AKP, me, <laughs> your favorite mafia boss. Like, I'm just imagining like how this would work. I guess like kind of like... I don't know. I'm about to say, like imagining just like 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 Jimmy Hoffa doing like campaign, but like Jimmy Hoffa tried to run for president. So I take that back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same. <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm just imagining too that on so like this dude's just like dripped the fuck out, like just gold. Like I could see his campaign videos being pretty sick. I didn't look into any of them. Like I don't speak <laughs> Turkish. I'm not going to try to like you know <laughs> try to understand what's going on. So I'm just being like he looks cool, <laughs> but um. So he has kind of like his campaign videos aren't just the sense of him being like or his posting, if you will, isn't just like him being like Erdogan's good. He has like literally threatened to kill people on social media and stuff that is imprisonable by, you know, Turkish law, you know, uh, threatening people with violence. Hmm. Some cases Hmm. maybe actually using violence against them. We'll get to that. Um, He uh, the Turkish courts continuously rule in his favor, saying it's freedom of speech. And um, just to, you know, put that in mind, uh, HDP members do not get the same treatment No, uh, for much less. Yeah, for nothing, basically, for just being democratically elected, they go to prison. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's what happens to HDP members. Mm. And they never get out again. Exactly. I mean, so, yeah. There was this incident of... Uh, a Kurdish woman visiting her son who is in prison and like when she visited him um, she greeted someone in Kurdish 
uh, like in in the prison halls and she is not allowed to see her son for six months for half a year now because she spoke yeah. Kurdish in the prison. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I so, think people do forget yeah. that the Kurdish language and Kurdish culture was criminalized by yeah. Turkey until like the 80s or 90s. Yes. You know, Oof. so now as of this year, as of April of, of, of 2021, he has had rocky relations with the government which is making him feel that there is possibly a power play going on. He has, he's, he's kind of had like, so the thing of the matter is, is that there are two heads of these like, like rivaling mafias. There's mm-hmm. Sedat Peker, who is, you know, our guy. And uh, there's this other man, Alatin Chachiki. Wait, 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 wait. I, I got to see the name. <laughs> yeah, sorry. These names are going to be very, 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 very butchered, but nonetheless. I think you kind of like Alatin Jackie G. Okay. Jack, cool. Jack, yeah. G. It doesn't matter. I think we just yeah. like pronounce it because otherwise, like every time bad I have guy to... number three, bad guy number two. Yeah. So <laughs> he's he's literally a gray wolf. Uh, like okay. guy. <laughs> Great. And he's uh, also hint hint a. Former MIT agent. Oh, perfect. Oh. Yeah. When those two yeah. things are connected. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he's very close to the MHP. He's a personal friend of Devle uh, uh, Bacheli, the head of the MHP. And there's suspected that there's an ongoing war between these two factions oh. of getting closest to Erdogan. And in April of 2021, um, our man uh, 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 Peker had 121 apartments of his crew searched and 54 members of his crew arrested. Oh. And his family has also been like harassed by law enforcement. And, you know, I mean, just, you know, the police are crazy, you know, right? Like just harassing people left and right. Even if you're a mafioso, they'll still <laughs> come after you. And he's been living in Dubai since then. Dubai is a great place for you to flee. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. Apparently. Because isn't your, isn't, isn't Bash, Vas, um, Vassal Bashkov still yeah. there? The skull? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. I think everyone goes there. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's a nice place. <laughs> Him and Drake. Yeah. This guy. <laughs> Drake and uh, Becca. And yeah. <laughs> So there's a there's there's a um, there's a speculation that then that he has been kind of given up for knowing too much or for just not being loyal or whatever it is, you know. And so this is going to kind of bring in like a massive cast of characters who then he starts giving up Ooh. bit by bit. <laughs> but one of the first people who then super important is uh, Suleiman Soylu, who is the current interior minister of turkey he should be the foreign uh the, the the former interior minister because he had to step down because of covid related shit policies that he was um you know doing or not doing yeah. and uh, uh then like turkish internet like turkish twitter stuff like blew up being like don't step down you're like a oh, hero what? this and that and that and he like erdogan's like i have to listen to the people he's not <laughs> stepping down that is interesting. Like, yeah, I, it's insane. I try to ask, because like the COVID situation, especially like last year, it was kind of like not even telling people that there was COVID around or yeah. or a lot of the times just like sending people home saying, oh, you don't. Well, the doctor's saying, yeah, you have COVID, but we won't register it as COVID. You have to go home now because, you know, otherwise cases yeah, go up. Turkey so. was trying to still like bank on that. Uh, like tourism and stuff would come to them, yeah, you know. Yeah. So mm. there were like very clearly people like reporting in Turkish airline flights that then like there's a shit ton of people on these flights sick. Yeah, Turkey is saying they don't have COVID. Like this is not adding up. Like this it's is just, obviously. It's just a code. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah, just. Uh, I mean, you Walk know, it off. the Brits just look that way. All right. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> yeah. The German solution would just drink drink some tea. Okay. Uh, Soilu is kind of an interesting character as well because um, uh, Pekker had a really good relationship for a while where he would kind of appear like all the time talking about like if it's like this. It was always speculated that that Pekker was very close to the AKP. He was close mm-hmm. to, you know, Erdogan, obviously. And he's like, no, no, no. But but Soilu is a good guy. He's clean. He's he is. He, there is there's nothing going on with him 
Um, he Why is, do I his, feel like you're about to tell me that he's the most evil of them all? <laughs> no, no, he's oh, by far not the most evil. There's, there's. <laughs> oh, good. I'm looking forward <laughs> to this. So, <laughs> so the, the thing that the, the thing that 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 makes Solo super interesting though is that, um, yes, uh, he is he is very much involved with the mafia. You are right about that, mm-hmm. Kieran. He is cool. also from the far right wing of the AKP. Remember, he is an AKP member of of <laughs> government, which means that then that he is kind of like the like. The go-to guy for the reaction, the the, uh, the the interactions between the mafia, the AKP, and the MHP, because they will like all parties will listen to him, because he's kind of like yo, like you know, I mean, a thousand times handshake emoji or hand, handshake mm. meme, like it's like we're all on the same team, like it's mm-hmm. cool, and he has been because he's in the position that he has and in, in politics has been a main person of keeping mafia uh, mafiosos out of um uh out of prison or shorter mm. prison sentences and so on so on and so forth so there has been nev- no official pinning of things to him but it is highly suspected because of just his you know how he fits into the whole scheme of things and mm. the fact of that like <clears throat> Uh, Soilu, uh, sorry, uh, 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 um, Peke kind of just like, yeah. like you know, mentioned him a lot of that he wasn't like that that he was clean, which is kind of like, all right, like he but, probably he probably isn't. And um, didn't didn't he like promise to him? Like, didn't he inform him before there were like kind of yeah. like investigations going on against yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. So which I mean, it, which, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is it's kind of yeah. like a friendship act, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So it's always in these things of like very, very, very questionable behavior, but there's never like officially things that can point to him. Uh, but it's also possibly because his predecessor, one of his predecessors, was so significantly horrible that like any like like even like a little bit less interaction with mafia like makes you look like a fucking saint. And another thing that then's very interesting is that. Um, he is being considered possibly to be one of the heirs to Erdogan mm. uh, if, you know, Erdogan decides to step down or something like that because there's a battle between Edo- uh, there's a battle between Soilu and a battle between uh, Berat Al-Baya- Albayarak, who is uh, Erdogan's son-in-law, and for the real heads, they know that he's the former finance minister who had to step <laughs> down when the yeah. Lira initially <laughs> crashed two years ago. <laughs> Um, who comes uh, up multiple times in our story, by the way. Like, uh, uh, just, oh, I love it. Would it, would it surprise you that Erdogan's son-in-law is also very much involved with the mafia? <laughs> I love Turkish Jared Kushner. He's just so good. <laughs> <laughs> so I mentioned then his predecessor, who I talked about very briefly before, of this Mehmet Ayar, who um, was... The minister, it was a predecessor. He was a he was the interior minister in the nineties, and mm-hmm. he kind of like was the one who solidified this relationship. Like Yulia said, like with assassinations uh, of Kurdish and and Cypriot politicians, particularly in the nineties, which was like you oh. know because the the uh, um, you know history these these two countries don't seem to like each other sometimes, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, so. He has always been a key player, and it very much is that then this is also an inherited family business because his son, uh, Tolga Aryar, who is an AKP member, is maybe the most evil person in this entire list, and he's not even in the mafia. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, that's beautiful. All right. He's he's just like, he's an amateur, you know? He does it for the the love of the game, you know? Dude. He is evil. Like I have, mm. I th- like I have to. Before I talk about him, trigger warning. Please skip past this. Then, yeah. um, there is a lot of. I guess I have to do the trigger warning at the beginning of this episode anyway. But again, for <laughs> if you you know decide to sit through, uh, this is the part that if you want to listen to and you want to skip over, um, you know, check back in in five ten minutes and see <laughs> see how we're doing. Um, he is the son of the former interior minister. And a very, very, very loyal AKP member. And in uh, March, uh, March 26, 2019, he had an interview with a uh, Kyrgyzstani, inter- uh, uh, with a Kyrgyzstani journalist named Yadana uh, Kaharam, uh, Kaharaman. And uh, 
she then said after the interview, she filed, uh, she, she uh, said that he, uh, he raped her. And uh, she mysteriously died a few days later. Oh, wow. She was murdered, oh, wow. and it was very, very, very much suspected that uh, 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 this uh, Tolga Aya had something to do with it. Uh, uh, Pecker confirmed it, more or less, saying that then that the mafia was the one who did this hit, and that she um, was murdered because, yeah, because of the, the rape allegations. <laughs> I mean, it, right. it does seem kind of obvious because, like, the investigations were like quite like uh, short, and mm. and what's it called the uh, what's the, the Staatsanwaltschaft? What's that in English again? The the um, the <laughs> right, district attorney or whatever. Yeah. 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 Exactly. They they yeah, they stopped investigations like after I don't know like a really short amount of time. Yeah. So, yeah. so very shortly after though she was um, yeah she was killed and then the investigation mm. was taken up by the by the district attorney and then just dropped mm. very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the only thing that I could find on this was about Tur- in Turkish media that like tried to like dig into this and it like doesn't really go very far. Um, but it's very. It was very much expected that then that Ayad had something to do with it, and lo and behold, like uh, um, our uh, our mafia boy uh, uh, Peker com- more or less confirmed it. Um, yeah. He confirms that like the mafia was contracted to do it. So like yeah, because you said the mafia killed her, but it's like it's important to understand that. Well, he like implied that they were hired to do that. Yeah, yeah. like that they had no personal motivation themselves because. We're heavily implying it was Togal Akar. Mm. Yeah, uh, you want to hear? You want to hear how 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 even worse he? But murders, murders, probably the worst thing he's done. Uh, yeah, how 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 should this get like? This doesn't get worse. worse. It's just that then, like he does, like he's like typical fail son bullshit of that he just loves coke. He oh, yeah. loves coke so much that he gets. He was like he's been filmed multiple times on social media, and. He's like played it off as like it was just a powdered sugar prank, guys. Like it's, it was just it's not real code. Wow. Yeah, of course not. Classic, classic powdered sugar prank. Yeah, well, which I mean, like doing does. coke isn't like I mean this isn't bad. Do whatever the fuck you want. Um, uh, 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 but setting up a Shell Chemicals company in Izmir to smuggle in coke in the harbor there is a little bit bad. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smuggling in powdered sugar. Why are you smuggling in it? Uh, <laughs> you, know. you know. Yeah. So him and uh, the brother of Erdogan's son-in-law, uh, uh, Serhat Albayrak. Uh, these names. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah, they set up this the Shell Chemical uh, uh, company in order to do that, and uh, the brother of Erdogan's son-in-law is very, very, very close to one of the largest and most influential media companies in Turkey, in Turkey called Turk Uyaz Media Group. So, um, yeah, this is all just like getting, you know, cool and, and normal and this and that mm-hmm. and that. And um, so these are all things that then have kind of just been known and out in the open. Uh, but back to the brother, so Erdogan's son-in-law, Berat, um, apparently he had a fight with uh, Peker, the mafioso, and 128 million uh, in like U.S. dollars, like uh, of of Turkish lira reserves, just disappeared. Wow! Oh, <laughs> is this kind of like I take my ball and go home with it kind of situation? Yeah. So it is oh, cool. like it's like both of both of the the brothers are very much intertwined in with the mafia. No one knows. So the thing was is that Peke, the one of the very few things he would not disclose was what he had a fight with Erdogan's son-in-law about mm. because he thinks that it holds him leverage. So, like, that, like, sorry, I do not know. I'm not going to, like, make any speculations because this stuff's all super weird. But <laughs> um, do we want to take a little a little breather and maybe, like, reflect or do we want to just keep going about all these fucking ca- cast of characters of people <laughs> who then were just in just... <laughs> continuously uh um you know either outed by the mafia or outed by their crimes that they had done previously than the mafia confirmed i mean there's this one thing i want to say which is oftentimes 
people, especially in Eurovision chat, will say, you know, Turkey's not Europe, right? The Turkey, Turkey, that's not a European country. This is the most European shit I've ever seen. This is this just reminds me, like all of this seems very reminiscent of like the years of lead shit. Oh yeah, just like yeah, like oh, uh, there was a car crash involving a right wing militia, and oh, lo and behold, their boot was full of like guns and drugs and fake passports and stuff. I was like, yeah, that's that's just what it was like in the (laughs) fifties. Yeah, and I think uh. I think the thing that then I mean I'll like harp on this theme multiple times in this episode is that I find it so funny that then like all this stuff is like you know known. Mm. Um, we're reporting on it, which is like to be very fair, it was not too difficult to find all this information. If I'm lie, if 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 I'm being you know yeah. upfront about it, um, and the fact that Germany still has like really good relations with Turkey, and then at the same time is like. You know, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to deal with, you know, dictators. This and that and that is like, Mm. this is just like all really horrible. (coughs) And it ends up and I'll get to the sense of how Erdogan reacted to all this, which is if you've been paying attention to the news and you already know. Um, But I really think that these are connected. So um, do you want to hop back into the mess? Do you want to, you know? I mean... Not really, but I think we have to. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so, uh, uh, there is another cast of characters who then was kind of unveiled of uh, Vesia Filis, who mm. uh, used to be the former press manager for uh, Erdogan in Brussels. Um, until then, he was asked by Brussels to leave the country because he kept threatening people on social media who were exiles of Turkey, who were political <laughs> opposition people, um, with like fake accounts and stuff like that that he was setting up and just like oh. continuously writing at them and this and that and that. So he was he was a human Turkish bot. That's um wow. That's great press managing you're doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm so good at my job. I've been, I was harassing people for fuck's sake. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is like I'm I'm just imagining you know, the Don, the 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 Don Draper meme from Mad Men in front of the whiteboard is like <laughs> set up fake accounts, harass exile. I mean, as a press manager, he might also be in charge of the social media. And if this is part oh, of the shit, social media like- account, yeah, he's a content manager. <laughs> he's a social media guy. He makes funny Instagram stories and threatens people uh, in the Turkish opposition through fake accounts. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's not all that he's you know well known for. So after he stepped down in 2019, he was caught at the Bulgarian border smuggling in 100 kilograms of heroin into the wow. country. <laughs> into that's Turkey. a lot of heroin. Um, that's some good content <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously and i'm then, doing it for the vine guys where it gets really fucking sketch is that then turkey immediately then demanded that they take the case over and they sealed all the info regarding him and his case of course yeah of course so mm-hmm. i'm assuming that they learned that tactic from the germans Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim's not great. You know, that. that's definitely some, like, NSU 2.0 shit. Yeah, it's of, like, like, oh, sorry, 160 years, maybe you can have a look <laughs> at this. Exactly. <laughs> so it was it was very, like, that very clear, you know, uh, mafia running. This is the thing, too, is that, like, I love the fact that the mafia thinks that then, like, all these AKP dudes, like, would fucking, like, ride or die for Erdogan and them so much that it's like, hey, you, former, like, head of a very important position... Um, you want to run heroin for us? <laughs> this is, okay, so the, the thing I find very interesting about that little incident is, like, we've been setting up this, we've been painting this image of, like, Turkish officials have, like, the mo- Turkish mafia as their kind of, like, running dogs to do these kind of, like, dirty deeds for them. And yet still, this guy's like... I'm going to run the heroin myself. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know what? Else. And you know what? He's not the only one because we got another another one here as oh. well. Uh, Erkam Yildirim, who is the mm-hmm. a son of former prime minister, uh, Binali Yildirim, who uh, stepped down in 2018 on the wish of Erdogan. He is the f- final prime minister of, of, uh, of Turkey. Turkey does not have mm-hmm. a prime minister currently. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, who so, needs uh, it if you have Erdogan? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was also sm- smuggling coke into Turkey. Oh, so, 
Oh, all okay. these like really important people get either themselves or like someone a little bit lower than them or their fucking son to just be like, yeah. dude, like what? you know, you love Erdogan, don't you? Like, you'd sm- like you'd smuggle some coke. And I legitimately think, like, coming to the end of this, like, like we're we're, we're going to kind of end up in this. I legitimately think this is like some fucking like Iran Contra shit. Okay, can I, can I just say, okay, yes. I agree with this, but I could also just say I had to look up a picture of um, this last guy you're talking about, Ericum. Um, mm-hmm. Dude looks like the fat controller from fucking Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He is. I don't understand how any of these people think they could get away with like doing crimes, like especially crimes <laughs> that might involve like, I don't know, any form of physical exertion, possibly running from the cops. Also, this Feliz guy is oh. incredibly sweaty. Are you oh, looking yeah. at a picture of him now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're not like they're not the the hottest of of dudes. You know, I was expecting them to be hot, but I was expecting oh. them to like like I was expecting you know your typical politician body of just like just kind of a little bit of a bit of a pop belly. Yeah, Feliz literally looks like Turkish Victor Orban. Like, he does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. He, okay. Feliz constantly looks like he's in an interview that's going wrong for him. Like, oh, really is. Is. <laughs> and and Yildirim just Yildirim looks like he's wearing a fat suit. It's not that like it's not that yeah, fat that's the <laughs> problem. It just looks like it We're doesn't look real. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have one thing that I was wondering uh, mm. about. It's it's very interesting, and I think that even like Pekka makes this point as well. And I don't want to make this point, but I gotta have to. It's it's kind of interesting, or it seems hypocritical. And for us, it's not a surprise that like a party like the AKP and the far right wing of the AKP, which is kind of like the connection to the MHP, to the coalition party, mm. and also to the mafia. Um, and they are I, all hear, about, I hear Rosa in the background yelling. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> yeah, cat. Keep, uh, <clears throat> keep going. Yeah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> that they are kind of like, especially with the MHP or like, um, or, yeah, oh, the AKP does that as well. It's kind of like all about, like, not all about, but I mean, they do paint the picture of like trying to be a religious kind of like party mm, thing. Yeah. And I mean, all these scandals are not very. I don't know, like I mean, pious. you know, yeah, 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 they're just I mean, of course, we know. Oh no, th- right. this is more like uh, it has to do with power interest. Of course, that's obvious to us. But it's interesting how you like scam the public, yeah, and then do all of these funny things. And it's like kind of chef sache. Like everyone yeah. is involved. Everyone can smuggle a f- like few hundred case or uh, okay of of heroin and coke. And I so just, I really like the idea of just like Erdogan phone like phoning up. I don't know Yilla Dream or Feliz, and just like, hey Erdogan, what's up? Hey. <laughs> God wants you to smuggle drugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. okay. No, that makes <laughs> sense to me. <laughs> yeah, I guess you say so. <laughs> yeah. What does the I prime minister so. say about this? He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn, my dad. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but I, I, I think that then, the, like, I mean, the obvious, like, I mean, yeah, I think this is very much true both of it that like it's kind of funny the sense of a very like two hyper conservative parties in yeah. europe um one of which who are just like legitimately supporting jihadists openly the yeah. other one less openly so <laughs> but um, still. yeah uh that yeah that this this whole thing with with that it's like coke and heroin or the thing but yeah. I, the thing that then has me like wondering of like is it that they're smuggling the drugs for the mafia or is it that then mm-hmm. the like that money is going to think like that's the thing that then I would really like to know, which wasn't really disclosed of like how that money is getting slushed around and mm. ending up. Cause I mean like we know where that money's ending up, like which we'll get to, but yeah. um, like I mean, who's yeah. pulling the strings is kind of the interest. Like how much the thing that I really want to know is how much power does the mafia have and how much power, power does Erdogan have? And if just like the people who are like other like people within the AKP and MHP are just kind of like, you know, shuffleable, bodies within a uh you know power play thing between these 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 people I, because i sometimes yep sorry no no 
Okay. Sometimes I uh, ask myself, this is kind of like, um, I mean, sometimes I wonder, like, who's more fucked up and dangerous? Like, the people that do it in the sense of, like, the in the sense of, like, the ends justify uh, the means. Mm. In that kind yeah. of sense, like we have with, with like a few groups, like, I don't know, fucking name any, I know, or whatever, like they do some shit as well. And, but only if it finances, you know, their interests. Or if it's just like, oh yeah, we, we just really like to be mafia, but we just really, really, really like to do the shit. We just really are into this. You yeah. know, so you just do it for money in general, you know? Well, the mafia like, dudes <laughs> clearly just do it for money in general. Like, I don't, there's, there's literally no political gain for them. Yeah, yeah I know, I know, power. I know. Yeah. I, I'm just saying, like, who, like, uh, who do we? Who's worse? Yeah, who's worse? I don't know. Maybe that <laughs> you should not compare that. And, and, yeah. Like, you can't say who's worse, but it's just, like, very fascinating. I mean, then. Yeah. yeah. So, the, um, there's been, like, another, like, a few other jobs. I mean, I wrote this thing of this, like, sketchy yes media group that was founded by, um, a bunch of very important people, but it doesn't really tie into the mafia stuff, so I kind of don't care. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I do care, just that Turkish, like, there's been a media apparatus just, like, founded by um, Erdogan's son-in-law and the health minister. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, Yeah, that's always good. Yeah, called the Pelican Group was, like, the, the Pelican mm-hmm. Files was the name of the thing that then leaked it, and that the the the, um, the media agency is called Tur- the this, this, this Turkura's uh, Media Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, I've uh, mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. But speaking of media, this is where the mafia then actually did do something. Is that, um, so the um, uh, the mafia just kind of like gives contracts out to like lower AKP members. One of them being this Metin Kulunik. And uh, kind of just like had him hire goons to go and like bully a newspaper, uh, Hurriyet, which is which is one of the largest papers yeah. in um, in Turkey, which used to be an anti Erdogan paper until yeah. they forced them to, by bullying them uh, by literally sending a mob to attack the the, the place. Down. Yeah, uh, they were forced to uh, uh, sell it to an AKP friendly buyer. So they sold it to Metin Kulink or? Huh? Wait, did they sell it to Metin Kulink? So the politician or? No, 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 no. He was the uh, one okay. who then got people together to like go and uh, bully the. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. He it sold it, the sold, mafia, it, it yeah. sold to someone else who was who's who's an AKP, um, like close person. Because remember, only Erdogan's son-in-law can own a media thing. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> How could I forget? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Well, now that he's lost his job as head of the central bank or whatever he was doing, uh, which he did a bang Finance up job minister. there, I heard. Finance minister, yeah. He did a great job there, as far as I know. Um, yeah, and now he's running media. That's that's going to go well, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, that's that's the silver lining. The more the more businesses that fall into, like, Erdogan's son-in-law, the more evil companies fall into Erdogan's son-in-law's hands, the more likely they are to just become completely financially insolvent. Yeah. Because I mean, it just will fall apart. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, this is accelerationism right here. <laughs> right. Giving as many, like, political things to Erdogan's son-in-law. I mean, um, I remember this like as being like considered part of of something like the past coup uh, measures yeah, that Erdogan mm-hmm. kind of did, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was this like is, a, this all ties into that. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 definitely. So like the newspaper like Hurriyet was uh, like sold in 2018, and the coup was in 2016. Totally mm-hmm. makes sense. I remember like reading mm-hmm. about it and how like a lot of the staff was fired, of course, because I mean, yeah. you you don't yeah. want your own uh, staff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay. All yeah. those jobs went to my son-in-law. Yes. <laughs> He's writing the whole newspaper. He just, you <laughs> know got what? six columns now. Get cracking. Yeah, it's just Damn something like... Bad, I mean, I <laughs> yeah, imagine, imagine like a, a Turkish TikTok house, but it's just like <laughs> Erdogan's son-in-law and his like really corrupt friends. <laughs> it, no, it's just his son-in-law and no one else. No. Just like TikTok <laughs> house. Just like, Let me give you the tour. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> this room is the media agency. This room is oh my, my fucking like coke haven. Yeah. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> yes. By magic, I mean uh, the next thing that then that the that the mafia also oh no, helps does. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the last thing. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't mm-hmm. worry. This is the last thing that then was confirmed more or less than that, that, that at least I wrote mm-hmm. down. 
Um, mm. This is no this is no surprise to us. We have talked about this multiple times on the show, but surprise, fucking surprise, the mafia is also very much connected into the sense of Turkey <laughs> selling and smuggling weapons to Al Nusra and ISIS. And oh, making yeah. sure that people cross the border and this and that and that and that they help the Free Syrian Army, the Turkish Free Syrian Army, mind Oof. you, the special one that Turkey controls, which is pretty much just ISIS. Yeah. Yes, and we have talked about that. <laughs> we have talked about that, exactly. Uh, that was the yeah. episode that we did with Kedem, I believe, if you want to go back and listen to to, a, to an oldie, a but episode. a goodie. Um, yeah, so this is like a thing that then, obviously, <laughs> we have, you know, there's been a lot of talk and speculation of things of like MIT agents being on the border to certain areas that then were ISIS controlled and just like letting people cross in pretty much mm-hmm. like having a lot of contacts within ISIS. There's a lot of people who are the MIT is made up a, with a lot of people who are very close to the MHP more so than the AKP um, mm-hmm. who like legitimately like like low key like align themselves with Al Nusra and ISIS and Al Qaeda and stuff like that. Yeah. So there is no surprise, you know, and the sense of it too is that Turkey very much, regardless of I think that then that one, I mean, yeah, there is the like ideological similarity between that then I think that the people of the MHP and the Grey Wolves like, like legitimately like ISIS. Um, but in the sense too that then ISIS was also fighting a very important war for Turkey, which was the uh, war against not just Assad, but uh, against the Kurds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. so Erdogan definitely uh, saw that then as an opportunity to uh, utilize, you know, the I don't, you can't even say the enemy of my enemy is my friend because just ISIS is also his friend. Like, yeah, there is yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but the mafia the then has is been, my friend, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So the mafia has then definitely been like. I'm assuming, although this has never been like, you know, like laid out, you mm. know, where that money is coming. Like, th- that is the fucking drugs. That's the fucking like Iran contrast drug smuggling money. And you can't tell me anything else. Yeah. Like, because it can't be on official, you know, uh, like the government can't like put this in. The, this is, you know, in the budget. This is the, the ISIS weapons money, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's a very simple plan. We go into the Turkish parliament and we ask who he here has an incredibly doughy relative. We get him to smuggle some drugs across the Bulgarian border. We sell that to some yuppies in Ankara and Istanbul and then use that money to get ISIS to, uh, you know, kill our enemies for us. And, uh, you know, they only, yeah, like the only thing they don't like about ISIS is that they're Arab. I think that's it. Like everything yeah. else is just like. If they were Turkish, this would be beautiful. Yeah. And that's <laughs> I mean, what they do when they hand them the money. It's like, damn, I wish you were Turkish. Yeah. <laughs> like, All right, dude. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I it is like, it's, it's really like, I mean, because at the end of the day, this relationship, as Yulia mentioned at the beginning of the episode, comes down to the fact that Turkey needed a way to kind of do their dirty business with the groups that they don't like, particularly yeah. Kurds and Armenians. And... I would be very curious of what connections were made between Azerbaijan and maybe the mafia and stuff like that and how that whole thing of just doing war crimes, hanging out, having a good time. Um, the 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 thing that I just find is so interesting about Turkey currently within the, the, the Erdogan era that we're in of this country is how... Um, there is like the thing that then like really I think makes the mafia bosses really like him so much is his neo Ottomanism of that they were like tapped in to do this as like a job, you know, way back when. And now that they have a guy who is like ideologically quite similar to them, has legitimized this into like a whole other different regard that then it's like I it is fucking bleak. It is it is like I know that because you were saying that then how like European this is and it's like yeah like years of lead shit and whatnot that didn't end well <laughs> you know <No. laughs> like, and it really is it really is um like you know for for all the times that we've talked on Turkey and this and that and that on the show it's like there's always kind of the thing of like I don't think it was ever really necessarily clear until like these last couple of weeks how deep these like like just 
this shit goes. And it's like, it was always kind of like speculated, but having a dude confirm this because he's afraid that then he's going to be like replaced is like, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. Like it's, it's yeah. really insane that, like I said earlier, that we can have these like discussions of who and who, you know, who is and who isn't authoritarian and this and that and that. And like Europe still like treats Erdogan like he's like not, and he just has a, yeah, like a, a a massive deep state apparatus that then is just like solidifying so, yeah. this like expansionist, you know, bullshit, and you know all the other regressive shit that he's doing. So, what do you think? Which kind of war is he going to start next to distract from all these revelations? Oh, what you mean? Which one is he going to start, or which one has he already which, started? Yeah, which has he already started? Would I it know. surprise you that then immediately when these allegations came out, Erdogan just started yeah. like reattacking northern Iraq? Yes, of course. I mean, this is a typical behavior that he kind of does, which is uh, yeah, yeah. We have seen oh, yeah. that in the past several times, like even. Even if it's just critique about like the economy or something like that, bam, Erdogan starts a war. I mean, it's mm-hmm. not the only reason. He also hates Kurdish people. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. whole like other racist situation. Um, well, like one facilitates the other. Yes. Like it, yeah. it's yeah. we we hate the Kurds because we need a distraction and we need yeah. a distraction, so we hate because the Kurds. Like, th- yeah. there is nothing more powerful and i'm saying this again and again in the different like uh top picks there's nothing more powerful to distract like from the issues going on in your own country than nationalism oh yeah, yeah. because suddenly you're supposed to love your country no matter where you stand no matter how much you suffer in this country i think we all heard that critique of like the 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 ramping up the Israeli occupation in Gaza and stuff, it was like Netanyahu being, well, he's now gone, but like, yeah, that that silenced his critics for, <coughs> what, like two weeks or something yeah. within Israel. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, you can go back to like, God, there's even a fucking joke in that movie Iron Sky where like Sarah Palin's like everyone, every president that starts a war in their first term gets reelected to their second. Um so it's yeah it's it's very upsetting the the other interesting thing that i'll add to this because i was reading it earlier today um and just to provide a broader context is um foreign exchanges did a good bit on like the tactical actual proud like the efficiency of the drone warfare that uh turkey used yeah basically the, the turkey manufactured and gave to the azerbaijanis in like the Armenian war and how they were actually like blowing up Russian tanks pretty like, and they made these things themselves. They're not like a massive arms producer. At least they're not a massive arms producer on the global scale. They're not Israel. They're not the United States. They're not Germany. Um, and that just like really kind of opens up, um, well, a new dynamic, right? That because, Turkey can start getting into the game. Yeah. Cause like, you're kind of looking, you kind of, I was reading that report and I just like flip back into like liberal geopolitical mind of like, you're, you're not meant to be able to do that. You're, you're not be you're not meant to be able to take on <laughs> Russia, but the, it's, they're on, they're a permanent security council member. They're meant to be one of the big ones. You're not meant to be able to take on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so you mean that like all those civilian targets that they, that they targeted as well were, were not just accidental, but done on purpose. I'm probably, uh, uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was like, i mean yeah because yeah, i remember like i mean like Ulrike franca like literally wrote that op-ed of like drones were the like the deciding factor in azerbaijan's war mm. um yeah look up the fucking just number of civilian casualties on the Ar- on the armenian side you know do it queen i know that you'll never listen to our show but yeah so yeah no but uh erdogan started an offensive like two weeks ago once again against the hpg which is a diff which actually is a variant of the pkk he is actually right about this <laughs> but um yeah like everything right. always comes down to then that he is he is fighting the pkk he's doing this he's doing that and yeah i think that then uh uh the lira is continuously dropping i don't know Beautiful. how what um i don't know how much long i don't know like 
it's it's definitely bleak, like all of it. Like Erdogan definitely is like reigning in more and more and more power. It is definitely using yeah. like just like not even just like questionable tactics anymore, but just like yeah, the th- like the surrounding is, himself with fucking goons. Yeah, the thing is, the question is always like, is it going to affect him in any way, or how easily does he recover from this? Especially when he starts another war. Um, <clears throat> because we have seen stuff like that, like, you know, happening before and then being brushed under the table. Um, yeah, because yeah. people forget the international media doesn't react because they have close ties to Turkey and Erdogan yeah. out of uh, certain reasons. We've um, bespoken before uh, on this <laughs> podcast several times. Um Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting because like you're right that there is Yudi's right there are these connections and it's interesting that like Nick you were saying that you know Germany hasn't like distanced themselves but like Erdogan has still kind of exists in this space of like basically all media all like politicians will just kind of insist that we actually don't have close relations with Erdogan mm. they will kind of like just. They just pretend he's not in NATO. They pretend that he's probably one of the, like Turkey is one of the most closely associated with the EU countries that isn't in the EU. Like I, I think the only ones above it is like Norway, Switzerland, and Iceland, uh, and then it's Turkey. Um, <laughs> yeah, like it, there's just a lot of pretending that we don't <clears throat> actually have um diplomatic channels or like any kind of power or sway over this country if, if they would react the same way they reacted when Erdogan attacked rojava uh or any of the kurdistan uh of the kurdish territory um of kurdistan um so that's it <laughs> of kurdistan um <laughs> So if if yeah if uh, if Germany reacts the same way they did during like the attack on Afrin the attack on Rojava, then they would say, we want, we want both sides to fight fair. We want both sides <laughs> to stop the fighting. I and want then a they clean would be like, fight. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And they would wait. One of them is the mafia. The other one is like. You know, one of them like is a le- like literally a fucking a member of NATO. <laughs> yes, and the exactly. other one is like you know, yeah. Uh, but normally, uh, like that's the German reaction. It's like, yeah, oh yeah, 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 we don't like that they're fighting. Like they should stop fighting. How about a ceasefire? <laughs> like, <laughs> so but it, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I love you idea. both. You yeah, you, you yeah, both exactly. are, You're my both. You're both. You are my favorite Auslander. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, yeah, that sounds but very I, German. <laughs> I love the I love the just like trying to paint this as a fair fight. And it's just like in the red corner we have a NATO member uh, yes. with complicit support of the mafia Al Nusra and ISIS. And in yeah. the other corner we have some terrified vis- village people who have taken up arms at a podcaster who's also taken up arms. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and one dude and yeah and then like one like US like special ops guy who legally is not allowed to fight or else he will be like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be seen as an act of war of against from like Turkey, like from the United States or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. It's like if I entered the WWE. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes, I think you do. got it, dude. I think you got it. <laughs> this is how it happens. Nick convinced me I can do it, and then yeah. I suddenly realized Nick was bullshitting the moment the bell rings. <laughs> yeah, I only got this like confirmed from one source, but like it's a it's a newspaper. Um. Hmm. And also, I didn't watch the video, the whole set up uh, Pekka video, um, so I can't tell you if it's uh, actually true. And the screenshot they took is, uh, like, what is with the lighting in Dubai? Like, what the fuck? Did he just, like, film this in front of a window and did he just put a bunch of spotlights up? I don't know. Oh, yeah. It's, that like, is, it's so horribly it's filmed, but I love yeah, how just, exactly. like, how fucking just, like, dripped out he is. Just fucking chains, know, watches. Right? Like, Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, he's, so, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> so on on the glass table in front of him, Picker has uh, a book, a book about Leo Trotsky. No. Uh, <laughs> a, a book about him uh, and his exile in Mexico. 
Uh -huh. <laughs> so people are speculating if this is kind of like a hint how he kind of fears retaliation by Erdogan <laughs> who would be Stalin in this scenario <laughs> that's the, 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 the mafioso or like Turkish mafioso just be like hey I'm, I'm like I'm like Leon Trotsky yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it's like you know when you like you know when yeah this is when like this is when like 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 you know dudes like yeah like like guys who are like into like sketchy business it's like yeah you gotta like read like machiavelli you gotta read like you know they'll be like you know powerful men you know gotta read uh uh you know stalin you gotta do this you gotta do that like they'll teach you the way the world works but for mm. him it's like the opposite it's like all right who's been like continuously on the run like all right we got, we got, we, exactly. we got trotsky we got <laughs> Forrest Gump from one part of the movie. <laughs> so I thought that was a really interesting <coughs> we detail have, of we that have video. The, the, the Greek royal family during World War II, their memoirs. The How Romanov's does, writings. Yeah. <laughs> How does Navani feel about having a Leo Trotsky book on his table? Not to compare these two. I'm just comparing like having like leaked videos about like deep state affairs no, in yeah, Russia yeah, yeah. and in Turkey. So No, you're you're absolutely right. There's uh, only two types of political videos in Europe, and that's either you're a Navalny or you're a Rezo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you mean of like not like official like governmental stuff, obviously. Yeah, yeah of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're, yeah, you're either a blue-haired YouTuber or you're a guy who's like possibly getting money from like the 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 the, the secretary is like the uh, the far the, the the fucking U.S. Department of State or yeah, you're a mafioso. Yeah, yeah. So there's the three yeah. genders. And how do you feel about Trotsky? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, one other quick funny. thing too. Sorry to go back to the the military offensive that Turkey oh, has done. Uh, no Turkey worries, committed war crimes that no oh. one uh, paid attention to. They oh, fucking, that's horrible, actually. Yeah. They uh, they've been attacking northern Iraq with uh, with uh, uh, chemical weapons, which oh, shit. no one yeah. has been paying attention to. The only thing I've seen has been Jungovet posted a thing about it. Yeah, because um, Jim, the, the media doesn't care if it's not like from a left wing perspective. Mm. Yeah, no, of course. I'm, I'm yeah. wonder who wonder who sold them that. Yeah. Just, God just say, damn it. Yeah, no, so horrible. I made, I, I bummed us all out. I bummed, you know, I'm sorry. We had to do this episode. This is a really big story this week. Um, it definitely is one of the countries that's in that we talk about a lot. And I thought that, yeah. hey, uh, you know, we could. No, we, it's important. Yeah. Corner Spade is a place that then if people are going to get this in English, yeah. you know, why not? Mm -hmm. yeah, I want a good like, story. Yeah, wait. I, I just want to say one thing. Like, I, I think, like, because we've talked about Turkey and, and like the atrocities Erdogan commits or, and like his all like his his party and, and the MHP and the Grey mm. Wolves and now the Mafia uh, or like before the Mafia as well. But like, yeah, it's like it, it's horrible. Uh, but like this one you just said is also like kind of really absurd at the same time. Like, you know, yeah, some of yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, like yeah, weirdly exactly. absurd and not absurd at the same time. Yeah. Like Kieran said of like that it is like italy in the 70s yeah you know and also getting the getting guys to drug run who look like they can't <laughs> regularly run yeah like it's like it is yeah. it's comical too at the same time yeah but okay all right so, so i told you this is the thing of that then like if you sit and you do your homework we'll go get ice cream all right you did yeah. your homework you got through all the bad stuff thank you we can go get ice cream now okay Yes, I have a really good story. I love ice cream. Yeah, I have a very good story. I want to go to Florida Ice. <laughs> we can go to Florida Ice, Kieran. It's in, in Spandau. Spandau. Yeah, in Spandau. All right, we can go there sometimes. We can it's take a, a field trip. trip. We can take a Spady field trip. We can do that as like uh, one of our like video series things. Take a oh, trip please. to Florida. Florida Ice Cream is delicious. Anyway, uh, Corner Spady uh, sponsored by Florida Ice Cream. Dude, that would be so <laughs> sick. That would be so awesome. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. I. I, I, I've been saying good story, all right? Something that then, you know, good left-wing direct action that did something this week, all right? Mm -hmm. And this has to do with housing as well. So a little I bit of a housing. precursor for maybe what next week's bonus is or something like that. I don't know. Um, There was a woman, is a woman in Spain, 66 years old. Her name is Teresa. <gasps> she lives in Barcelona and she was being evicted by the new company that bought her apartment, saying that um, she made illegal modifications 
on her apartment because she's handicapped. So she took the bathtub out and put a shower in, you know, something that she could like easily access. They said that that was illegal, that breached contract. And um, they were going to kick her out. And she's also paying rent that was like a thousand euros below market value. Yes, I know Those I said positive. All right. Motherfuckers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A bunch of people, like a bunch of like Spanish anarchists, like just like went on the street and like protest when they were trying to like evict her and she did not get evicted. And I think that that is absolutely lovely. She like went on the balcony and was like crying her eyes out and like gave a little speech and stuff like that. And was like super appreciative of like all these like people, some of whom were, were, were in the neighborhood, some of who did not know her, but simply came out. And, you know, supported this woman, uh, uh, Teresa, and uh, prevented a 66-year-old handicapped woman uh, from being uh, evicted by her evil fucking new overlords who were probably some Swedish company. I don't know. So that is like, you know, there is a bit of good that then can happen with shit like this. Good. That's some lovely direct action. I love to hear it. Yeah, that was nice. It's heartwarming. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. you will. I, I, I gave us something so horrible. I felt that I had to come with a story that wasn't all so good. So yeah. I hope that that little bit like I hope that you did your homework. I hope you got your favorite flavor of ice cream. Mm. All right. And there's a, uh, there's a Florida ice in Clado. So if we want to, we can go even <laughs> further. I think is close. <laughs> no, we're going further. I mean, uh, we in, that's in Brandenburg. So I mean, I haven't left the city in a while, so like <laughs> it has, in fact, been a while. It's been a, a while. while since I left Berlin, and I yeah. wasn't it to get. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> do you got anything to shout out aside from that Deutsche Wohnen and Diagnen? Yes, get involved in that if you haven't. You um, still need signatures. Yeah. You always need signatures. Do it. It's yes. going well, but don't get complacent. More signatures. Yeah. Um, All the signatures. Th- <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was something like... No, I don't remember the numbers, so I'm not going to say anything. DM Rob. Rob is being very helpful about that. Yeah. I mean... Well, no, by the time this episode comes out, Rob will have recovered from being um, hit with the vaccine. Ooh. So DM Rob. <laughs> um, other than that... Uh, theme songs by Melty Brains. It's called New Dawn. It's a bop. Listen to it early. Listen to it often. You should also check out our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash corner Uh We do a Eurovibe stream every Wednesday at 8 p.m. German time. And if you want more good Spatey goodness, if you want four extra episodes a month, oh, pay- Oh, what? four extra <laughs> four. episodes? That's oh, crazy. Four oh, extra God. episodes. <laughs> That's a spicy meatball. Um, <laughs> I've had a voice synthesizer for Mario uh, last night's great. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. But if you want that, go to patreon.com forward slash corner spatey and you can pay five dollars, four euro fifty. Four pounds, seven Canadian dollars. Just got one of those. Wow. Uh, That's yeah. psychotic. Those aren't real. That's not real money. That's <laughs> not real. But hello to Canada, the great white north. Um, hey, weird Norway. I'm Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you can go to there and donate, and you will get four extra episodes a month. And we'll we'll call you we'll call you cute. We'll tell all your friends you're really cute and you're doing well. We'll go to your high school reunion. Uh-huh. As your date, all four of us. <laughs> all four of us. <laughs> You'd have the, the hottest dates, then. Just saying. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will see you on. We will see you, lovely patrons, on Friday. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ciao.